following video clips are presented as a supplement to the Bell & Gossett Series 60 Installation, Operation and Maintenance Manual. Remember to allow all system and pump components to cool before you handle them to prevent physical injury. Close the isolation valves on the suction and discharge sides of the pump. You must drain the system if no valves are installed. Then, open the drain valves. Do not proceed until liquid stops coming out of the drain valve. If liquid continues to flow from the drain valve, the isolation valves are not sealing properly and you must repair them before you proceed. Then, leave the drain valves open. Do not close them until the reassembly is complete. First, turn off and lock out power to the motor. Remove the conduit box cover. Disconnect the power leads from the motor leads. Remove the conduit and power leads from the conduit box. Using your arm or other means, support the motor and then remove the four screws that hold the motor to the bearing assembly. On pumps with spring type couplers, remove the motor side coupler half from the motor shaft. Pull the motor off of the bearing assembly and remove the coupler. In the case of a spring type coupler, you'll want to almost completely back out the coupler set screws and then slide the pump side coupler half off of the motor shaft. First, remove the eight cap screws that hold the bearing assembly or adapter ring to the volute. Then, remove the bearing assembly. Insert a long punch between the impeller vanes or grasp the impeller with a strap wrench in order to prevent the impeller from turning. Remove the impeller nut, lock washer, impeller, and adapter ring. Then remove these items from the bearing assembly. For an aluminum bearing assembly like this one, remove the two bearing holder retaining screws that are located at the bottom of the coupler cavity. Then pull the shaft assembly from the bearing bracket. If necessary, strike the coupler end of the shaft with a soft faced hammer in order to remove the assembly. Finally, pull the wave spring out of the rear bearing bore. First, remove the spring retainer and seal ring. Insert a standard screwdriver under the seal head and carefully pry the seal head off the shaft. Pry the compression ring off the seal boot. Be careful to not scratch the shaft sleeve. Use a small screwdriver in order to loosen and remove the seal seat and gasket. If the seat retainer is in good condition, leave it in the faceplate. If it is in bad condition, Pry it out and replace it with the new one provided in the seal kit. Before reassembly, make sure that all of the parts are clean. Clean the pump parts in the solvent in order to remove oil, grease, and dirt. It is very important not to leave any fingerprints or any foreign material on any of the parts. Now, reassembly. Clean the shaft sleeve and seal seat recess. You can use crocus cloth in order to polish the sleeve. Do not scratch or gouge the recess or sleeve. 
Install the seat casket and seat into the seal recess in the faceplate or cover plate. On ceramic seats, there are two dimples located on one of the faces. The dimples indicate the side of the seat that rests against the seat gasket. Lubricate the seal boot with soapy water and then slide the complete seal head, the carbon ring, seal boot, driver, and compression ring over the shaft. Do not attempt to install the seal head by placing the components on the shaft individually. Slide the seal head on until the carbon ring contacts the seat. Make sure that the protrusions in the driver remain engaged in the notches in the carbon. Use the flat face of a screwdriver and firmly press on the top of the edge of the compression ring at several locations in order to make sure that the seal head sits flat against the seat. Then place the spring and spring retainer on top of the seal head. Lubricate the OD of the rear bearing with grease. On shaft assemblies that go into aluminum housings, lubricate the OD of the bearing holder, not the faceplate. On shaft assemblies that go into cast iron housings, lubricate the OD of the front bearing. Insert the new wave spring into the rear bearing bore. Insert the shaft assembly into the housing and then install and tighten the retaining screws. Install the impeller on the new bearing assembly and use the new impeller nut and lock washer provided with the new bearing assembly. Insert a long punch between the impeller veins or grasp the impeller with a strap wrench to prevent the impeller from turning. Torque the impeller nut to 96 to 144 pound inches for nuts used on 3 8 inch fine threaded shafts, or 204 to 264 pound inches for nuts on 7 16 inch fine threaded shafts. Clean the old body gasket from the volute. Put a new body gasket on the bearing assembly and then install the assembly on the pump body. Install the eight volute cap screws and tighten them according to the torque specifications in the cap screw torque values table. Now, we're going to reinstall the spring type coupler and motor. Install the new coupler on the pump shaft. Make sure that the coupler set screw is seated in the shaft dimple. Lift the motor into position and attach the motor side coupler half. Make sure that the coupler set screw is seated in the shaft dimple. Support the motor and then install the four screws that hold the motor to the bearing assembly. Connect the power leads to the motor leads and replace the conduit box cover.